Hello, uh, dear students. I hope that you and your loved ones are doing well and that all of you are in good health in these uh, challenging and difficult times. So uh, our riddle for this session uh, says, uh, this viral match stick riddle shows an incorrect math uh, equation that takes or that it takes moving only one match stick to fix. And there are two ways to do, the, uh, to do it. So as you can see here, we have a math, uh, math uh, equation, which says six plus four equals uh, four. This is uh, incorrect, uh, of course. For you, you are going to fix uh, this, uh, uh, this mistake. Uh, what are you going to do? There are two, two different ways of doing this. You need just to, uh, to move only one match, match stick. This is a match stick. So move only one and put it somewhere in order to get correct uh, math uh, equation. In this video, we are going to learn about uh, uh, defining uh, uh, and non-defining relative clauses. So we are going to make a difference between uh, defining and non-defining relative clauses. So the first, th uh, first uh, thing that uh, we should start uh, off by is what is uh, a clause. So this is a definition of a clause. Uh, a clause is uh, a group of words containing a subject and a verb which form a sentence or a part of a sentence. So here we have got a subject plus verb. Uh, this uh, this uh, forms a sentence or this is a part of a sentence. Example, uh, number one, I'm a student. So uh, this is a clause and at the same time is a sentence. Here we have got the subject uh, I and the verb am, um, uh, which is verb to be. Number two, if you believe you have uh, COVID-19, you should contact your family doctor immediately. So this is a sentence which contains two clauses. What are the, the two clauses we have got here is number one, if you believe you have COVID-19, here we have got the subject you and the verb believe. So this is one clause. You should contact your fam uh, family doctor immediately. This is another clause. This is the subject you should uh, contact. This is a verb. So what is a relative clause? Uh, a relative clause starts with the relative pronouns like where, why, what, and so on. These are relative pronouns. They are most often used to identify uh, or define the noun that precedes them. Example, the city where I live is small and quiet. So the relative uh, relative clause is where I live. Why is this one called uh, a relative clause? Because it starts with where. Uh, where uh, identify or this word identifies or defines uh, the words that comes before it, which is city. So the city. Which city are we talking about? Where I live. Okay. So uh, now we're going to make uh, the differences between defining relative clause and non-defining uh, relative clause. Defining relative clause tells us which noun we are talking about. It identifies, it restricts which noun we are describing. It is essential in a sentence, which means uh, if we omit or we leave it out, this, uh, the sentence can't uh, give complete meaning, okay? So we have got an example. I like the person who lives next door. So uh, this is who lives next door. This is a relative clause. Uh, this one, uh, so if we say, I like the person, which person are we talking about? The person who lives next door. So here we are talking about a specific person. So uh, who lives next door? It's necessary uh, to the meaning of this sentence. If I don't say who lives next door, then we don't know which person I mean or I'm talking about. So. Uh, defining a relative, a relative clause can't be left out, okay? So now let's move to talk about non-defining relative clause. Uh, non-defining relative clause gives us extra information about some things. Uh, extra information, it means uh, additional in information. We don't need this information to understand the sentence, which means this... Uh, type of uh, uh, of relative clause is not essential to the meaning of the sentence. It's not necessary. Uh, we can leave it uh, out if we want. An example, I live in London, 
which has some fantastic parks. So, which has some fanta uh, fantastic parks? It's not necessar uh, necessary to the meaning of the sentence, I live in London. Every one of us know the city London. Is this okay? So, everybody knows where uh, London is. So, which has some fantastic parts? It's just extra information. It means in this case, we can say just I live in London. And it gives meaning. Uh, okay, now we will move uh, uh, to talk about relative clauses and non-relative non clauses in more details, just to have clear idea and to do uh, a practice about this lesson. Okay, now we will do some practice about defining uh, relative clauses and uh, non-defining relative clauses. So let's start uh, off by defining relative clauses. Here we have got uh, an example. Uh, the boy who stole the bike is at the door. So uh, the boy, which boy are we talking about? So who stole the bike? So this sentence gives or adds information about the boy. It identifies or it defines which boy are we uh, describing or talking about? So who is the relative pronoun and who stole the bike is the uh, relative clause. And this kind of clause is uh, defining relative, relative clause. So here we have got uh, uh, the different uh, pronoun, uh, relative pronouns, who and tell whom. So number one, the first exercise is uh, complete the sentences with relative pronouns. So we are going to use these relative pronouns here to complete the following uh, sentences. Number two, join. Okay, number two, join each sentence with the correct ending using who, which, where, and whose. So we are going to match uh, the sentences from one to five with the, the ones from A to B. Okay, and then uh, uh, joining or adding who, which, where, and whose. Number three, fill in who is or whose. Who is is a short form of uh, who is or who has. This is called whose, which means who is or who has. Example, who's going uh, to the beach today? It means who is going. Who's finished eating lunch? Which means who has finished, uh, finished eating lunch? Whose uh, equals or has the meaning of belonging to whom? Here we are talking about possession. Whose cat ate my pet house? Uh, mouse, I'm sorry. Whose line is it anyway? So number three, you are going to fill in the blanks you have got here with whose or whose uh, possession. Uh, number four, join uh, the sentences. Use relative, uh, relative pronouns. I know a chef, he makes 100 types of pasta. So use uh, one relative pronoun and join these sentences. Okay, number five, delete the relative pronoun where uh, possible. So here we have got some sentences. You are going to identify the relative pronoun, uh, pronoun and then try uh, to delete it. It means try to omit it uh, where or when necessary. So uh, here we have got an example. Let's explain when we should uh, omit the relative pronoun. Uh, the rat that John saw yesterday was in the kitchen earlier. So the relative clause is that John saw yesterday. So the, uh, this is a relative clause. This relative clause contains subject, verb, and object. What is the subject of the sentence? Is John. And the verb is uh, saw. And the object is that. So in this case, we can omit that. So when a relative pronoun is the object of a relative clause, it can be omitted. So we can say the rat. So in this case here, we can omit this one here and just say the rat John saw yesterday was in the kitchen earlier. So let's do number one as an example. People who like playing tennis often uh, uh, like playing uh, badminton too. So the relative clause is uh, this, okay, uh, who like playing tennis? So uh, what is the verb here? The verb is uh, uh, like playing, is like, okay? The subject, so this is a verb, subject is who? So in this case, is it possible to omit this uh, 
uh, relative pronouns, uh, it's not possible to omit it because it is the subject of uh, the relative clause. It's not the object, okay? So try to do number two and uh, three, four, five, and so on. Now let's move on to uh, talk about uh, uh, relative pronoun or non-defining relative clauses. So uh, the first thing that you should notice about non-defining relative clause, it is written or put between commas. So my brother, comma, who claimed to have a limb, comma, sprinted after the bus or ran after the bus. So as you can see here, uh, the non-defining relative clause is written between commas. Okay, why? Because it just gives uh, extra and additional information. So the relative pronoun that uh, cannot be omitted or changed by that. So who, this who, uh, in non-defining -defin uh, uh, relative uh, clauses can't be omitted. We can't uh, uh, delete or erase it, okay? And we can't change it with that, okay? This is, uh, so this sentence is just additional information. It's not required to identify the no mean being modified, which is the brother. So number six, what are you going to do here? Join each pair of sentences using non-defining relative clause uh, between commas, okay? Here, so we are going to join these sentences and then put the non-defining relative clause between commas. Number seven, match the sentences with the relative pronouns. Here you have got sentences and here the relative, uh, the relative clauses. So match the sentences with the relative clauses. Number eight, complete the text with the relative pronouns. So these are the different relative pronouns you have got here. So uh, that, when, where, which, who, whose, if necessary, okay? So, and this is the text. Okay, and the next activity you are going to choose between uh, these sentences and say uh, which one is correct. Should we use a defining a relative clause or a non-defining relative clause. For each question, you have a clue. Example number one, uh, you have two houses. My house, which is in Miami, is very expensive. Or my house, which is in Miami, is very expensive. So which one is correct, A or B? So uh, number two, we are going to do number one, two, three, and so on. So one, two three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this is what you should do for the next activity. So now we will go back to our course book. So here you have got some photos, as you can see here. So uh, uh, before reading the text and just looking at the photos, I want you to say uh, which uh, innovations are we talking about here just from the photos. So, uh, okay, now what are you going to do? You are going to read about the entertainment innovations above and match each one to the category. So here you have got different uh, entertainment innovations. You are going to listen and read the text, then match them to these categories. Category one, uh, A, a website, uh, B, an event, uh, see a gadget. So let's listen uh, to this text now. Lesson 4C. The website everyone is talking about. Exercise 1. Read about the entertainment innovations and match each one to a category. A. A website. B. An event. C. A gadget. Entertainment Innovations Your roundup of the hottest events and coolest gadgets in the world of entertainment by Caroline Brett 1. Silent Discos A silent disco is an event where clubbers get a pair of wireless headphones when they enter the club. The DJ broadcasts music to the clubbers' headphones and everyone dances. The first disco took place at a festival where neighbours had previously complained about the noise. Silent discos are now becoming very popular. People who want to talk can take their headphones off. Brilliant! 2. 
high tech specs. These super cool glasses let you watch films or music videos anytime and anywhere you want. When you put them on, it's like having a huge TV screen in front of your eyes. Headphones, which are built into the glasses, allow you to listen in stereo at the same time. Boredom will be a thing of the past with these new high tech specs. 3. Online music lessons from the stars. The latest website everyone is talking about offers video tutorials for trainee musicians. The teacher in each video is the person who actually wrote the song. Stars like Katie Tunstall and Paul McCartney, whose Beatles songs are famous, are just two of the artists already on the website. Any musician whose songs are popular can submit a video. So, next time you want to learn a new song, log on to the website and pick up your guitar. So, uh, after, uh, so after listening, you are going now uh, to fill in the blanks with the suitable words, as you can see here. Later, try to do uh, the question of the comprehension and uh, the exercise number three. Okay, uh, so now move uh, to talk about uh, grammar, relative relative clauses, make a difference between defining relative clauses, non-defining. We have already talked about these things. Here we have got some examples of defining relative clauses from uh, the text above and other examples of non-defining relative clauses. So here you are going to choose the correct option. This is a rule about using uh, relative uh, defining uh, and non-defining relative clauses. Practice, write sentences using the correct tense and relative pronoun. Use commas when necessary. Try to do this exercise. So uh, uh, five, uh, rewrite the text above. You are going to rewrite this text again. Join the pairs of sentences with relative pronouns to make defining or non-defining relative clauses. This is okay. So we have got an example here. Vocabulary, so phrasal verbs with on. Replace the underlying phrasals uh, below with the phrasal verb from the box. Which phrasal verbs are, you, are not used? So we are going to uh, replace the underlying phrases below, these underlying phrases, with the, the phrasal verbs in the box. And then you say which phrasal verbs are not used. Exercise 6A. Replace the underlined phrases below with a phrasal verb from the box. Which phrasal verbs are not used? Log on. Put on. Carry on. Turn on. Get on. Hold on. Try on. Count on. So uh, this is uh, going to be the last activity in our lesson. So we are going to talk about you. Ask and answer the question uh, in exercise uh, exercise six a. So here you are going to uh, ask and answer these questions about yourself. So I hope that uh, uh, you have enjoyed this lesson. Uh, it was great having your attention. Thank you so much and see you in another uh, 